So we have gotten more information about Season 4 of The Dragon Prince at the Comic-Con at Home panel this year, although we might not have gotten as much information as a lot of y'all wanted. The main things that fans were asking were about when the show was going to come out, or when at least we would know when the show was coming out. And to those questions, we have gotten no answers so far. Nonetheless, we have gotten our first major update on the future of the show since the beginning of the year, and I believe that update is worth analyzing and celebrating. Because there is a lot here, and we shouldn't ignore that just because we don't have the information we might want. Now, in this panel, we get a lot of out-of-context information about what is going to happen in the future seasons of The Dragon Prince, not just in Season 4, but in Seasons 5 and 6. They have apparently written up to Season 6, which I must admit surprised me a little bit. They are making a lot of progress, but they had to basically start from scratch after the completion of the third season. They had to bring the process to a complete halt and then start it back up with the writing process of season four. And of course, from the writing process, it is a long way to the animation process, and I will talk more about this later. But let's focus on the information we do have, which is quite substantial. We know that there is going to be another graphic novel about the Dragon Prince after Blood Moon Huntress, and we know that this third graphic novel is going to focus on Viren's mentor. We also know that the Season 2 novelization, which will release shortly after this video in early August, is going to give us some more information about Viren's mentor. This mentor will be the focus of the next graphic novel, which is called The Puzzle House. So make of that what you will. I assume it will be especially puzzling. There will be a lot of strange little pieces of information floating about, and I assume quite a bit of it will relate to the Dark Arts. Now, the release date on that graphic novel is yet to be determined. But I assume it will not arrive until significantly after Blood Moon Huntress. And I really hope by Blood Moon Huntress's release date we get Season 4. But I assume that at the very, very, very least we will get Season 4 sometime before the release of The Puzzle House. Also, we've gotten significantly more information about the Dragon Prince video game which was announced with a little bit of fanfare as far back as the show has been airing, but we have not heard much about it so far. And so I think it is important that the show has now given us a substantial update on how that video game is progressing in its development. And, well, it seems like it still has a lot of progressing to do going forward. We are nowhere near the light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to that video game. But it was nice to hear from the people developing it about what they're working on. There were some funny jokes, like about the bait crypto coin, that I found funny enough to laugh at while I was watching the live stream. And it was interesting to hear the people working on the video game talking about how the video game will tie in with the universe created in the show, so presumably they know more about the show than we, the fans, do, even though they are not directly involved in the show. Also, we see the video game team being involved in these big writer's retreats that they do. So, based on that, I assume that the video game team knows the basic gist of the rest of the show, which would make sense. So all of that information is welcome, and all of it is a significant step up from the radio silence that we have gotten for six months. But none of it tells us anything substantial about the future of the Dragon Prince show. 
The information that we have hitherto gotten, while compelling, is hardly a salve to those of us who have been waiting for around two years at this point to see the next season of the show. Thus, I am thankful that we get some information about what the writer's room is coming up with. They do not drop substantial hints as to what is going to happen in Season 4, but we get a look at their process, which I believe is a welcome display of openness. Now, if you are someone who does not know much about how television is written, I really recommend that you pay close attention to the part where they talk about the writing process. It might be a major surprise to you. It was not a major surprise to me because I have studied a lot of writer's rooms. I am familiar with the overall process of crafting episodes of television. The basic template of writer's rooms, or at least good and successful writer's rooms, goes something like this. You sit down with your team and you work out the main plot points and the main thematic threads that the show is going to deal with in the upcoming season. Then you go in a step further and you break it down into episodes and decide exactly what is going to happen in each episode. Then, once you have a basic idea of what each episode will entail, you go and send off a staff writer to actually go and write the episodes and turn those plans into substantial screenplays. And then, once that is done, the template the writer comes up with is then revised and fleshed out by the writing team and especially by the showrunner. This is all quite common, and if that seems exhausting to you, well, yes, it is, trust me. So, I'm not going to say that the Dragon Prince writing process, which follows all of these main bullet points, is more exhausting than the writing process of any other successful writer's room, but I am impressed by how systematic it seems to be. There are specifics that are interesting, such as Ahas's well-documented love of colored index cards, displaying what is going to happen in an episode. And there is also something interesting in which when the writer goes off to write an episode, they don't actually write an episode. They write a 12 to 13 page skeleton about the episode and then the writing team gives their notes on that skeleton and then the writer goes back and writes the first real rough draft of the episode. This is quite a rigorous process, like TV writing should be, and it fits Ahas's systematic mind. So while it was nice to see that process outlined, it did not really surprise me. Although, however comprehensive that writing process is, it is not nearly as comprehensive as the agonizing, sometimes Sisyphean-seeming process of crafting the show as a whole. Ahas lets slip that they are writing up to season 6, even though, of course, as I'm sure you know, season 4 has not yet been released. So, how is that possible? Are they time travelers? Well, maybe they are, but I'd suspect that time travelers would probably not want to spend their limited existence in the desolate mire that was 2020. <laughs> yeah, just skip over that year. All joking aside, the point is that the production of these different seasons overlaps with each other. Now, this might surprise a lot of people. I think people who are at least semi-familiar with the process of making animation know that the process of writing the episodes overlaps. It's not like you work on one episode, complete it, and then move on to the other. That would be very inefficient. It doesn't work like that in any production, but in an animation production in which the process from 
Starting writing to finishing animation takes well over a year. Trying to do everything in one episode before moving on to the next one would be inefficient and borderline suicidal. The animation season would take a decade, which is obviously not practical. But the production of different seasons overlapping is something that is not quite as intuitive, even though it helps speed up the process of making shows like this significantly. They were probably writing season three significantly before season one finished animating. So the upshot of this is that even though season two was released only six months after season one, that does not mean that season two only took six months to release. Rather, both seasons were likely under production for significantly over a year, and it's just that the production of season two was offset from the production of season one by about six months. The sheer efficiency of this process makes it popular for a lot of projects, especially artistic projects that take a long time. Animation, of course, is one of those it takes forever, but also it can be used for big live action projects. The Lord of the Rings movies were famously shot back to back to back, and the Lord of the Rings TV show, which is looking to be the most elaborate and expensive TV production ever, a real Palace of Versailles of TV production, is also having its first and second seasons overlap in their production because it just makes things that much easier. Now, the other side of this, of course, is that you can't do this unless you know that you are going to get to make these other seasons. You can't put the cart before the horse, as they used to say back when horses pulled carts. But if you do have that certainty, you can overlap the productions like this and make your art more quickly and cohesively. There aren't really these big breaks between the seasons. The production processes of the different seasons just kind of blur into each other. The production just keeps on going, thusly, until either the show ends or it's cancelled. Now, the Dragon Prince had this process interrupted, and that is a major reason why there has been such an excruciatingly long break between Season 3 and Season 4. I'm willing to bet the crew is as frustrated as we are. The show made its first three seasons, and then there was complete radio silence, Netflix evaluated how the show did after those three seasons and eventually decided to give the show its last four seasons. So what that means is that the seasonal production could not overlap once you get past season three. For a lot of the writers and production designers, this meant that there was a major gap in the production process for the show in which they were basically left without a job. If you think that you are waiting a long time for the series to be renewed after season three, well, maybe you were, but the writers and production designers had to wait a lot longer. Likely, season three finished, say, a lot of writing and production work in early 2019, even though the episodes would not be finished animating until soon before they were released in fall 2019. So that means these people who are not directly involved in the animation process had to wait from, say, spring 2019 to summer 2020 to learn that they would, in fact, have work going forward. That's got to be excruciating. So if you are going to blame someone, and I don't blame you if you do want to blame someone, we all have a lot of pent-up disappointment and not anger necessarily, but bitterness about how long we've had to wait. Don't direct it at the people making the show. Direct it at Netflix for disrupting the production process by which the show is made. Still, although we don't have all the information that we might want, we still have a lot of wonderful little pieces of 
what's going to happen in the show going forward. We have all these little tidbits and factoids. We know that there is going to be this big conversation, I suppose, between Soren and Zubeya. We know that we're going to see the fan-favorite rogue Nyx again. So we do have information. We do have a solid idea that the show is moving forward. So I suppose we will have to try our best to be patient, even though production might continue for a while longer. So anyway, thank you all for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Donate to my Patreon if you can and you want to see more videos like this. I really do hope that we get the next season of The Dragon Prince before this time next year. I think we will, but there's no guarantees. I am glad to hear that it at least seems like the show is moving slowly because of technical boring reasons and not because of any significant dramatic problems in the production process. I'm heartened to hear that the writing team is up to season six. That's exciting news. So we will just have to wait and see what the show will throw at us next. So anyway, tune in soon for my next analysis. It will be coming soon. Thank you all again. Adios, comrades.